Hi, this is Steve Hollinger from Kyalu Gear. I wanted to do one last video this year, kind of a comprehensive look at putting in a kayak at Fort Point Pier and a little bit of an insider's tour down the Fort Point Channel. Next year we'll do a full tour um, with some more detail. But I figured I'd get a quick look, comprehensive look at what's going on. First of all, here's the parking lot, the surface parking lot at Fort Point Pier. On a Saturday it's pretty empty, plenty of spaces. And you'll see over here there's four spaces that are actually free for users of the public dock. Weekdays 7 p.m. to midnight, weekends and holidays 6 a.m. to midnight. Now those um, may be tough to come by so you can't, you can't count on them, but fortunately this surface lot is affordable. It's only $6 for a whole day on weekends, holidays, and uh, $6 after 5 p.m. It's $12 during the day and $12 for 24-hour parking. And also if you decide to come down for a multi-day excursion, maybe you're doing an expedition down the um, down the eastern seaboard or you're going up to Maine or something, a long trip, you can park in this lot for extended stay. You can also stay in this area, there's plenty of hotels, in fact we're looking at a hotel right now, a couple hotels and plenty of places to stay in this area. So this is the new dock at Fort Point Pier and this is the pier itself, I have my kayak over here. Plenty of room to load up a kayak, about five foot wide clearance on the ramps, the gangway is about five feet wide. The um, the dock itself, the floating dock, is open from dawn to dusk every day, and the pier is open till um, the pier is open 24 hours, and it's lit at night. So I'm just wheeling my kayak down the gangway, and I'm going to put in. And here we are. So you'll see this basin's relatively calm. In fact, today it's very calm. It's like glass right now. This is basically the condition of the Fort Point Channel most days, unless it's really windy. It's uh, maybe not suited to beginner because if you uh, have a problem with your kayak, there aren't shore. There isn't shore to um, to pull up on, to uh, scramble up to. So you actually have to find a dock if you have trouble. So. It's probably recommended for anyone from maybe a um, just above beginner to advanced. And obviously you wouldn't want to venture into the inner harbor without some decent experience. So right now I'm just trying to detach my wheelie thing from the kayak. Should be able to do so in a second. I'll throw the wheels in. I'm just stowing my wheels. Okay. I just stowed the wheels inside the kayak and now we're ready to go. I'm going to put the camera on the kayak itself and I'll load the kayak into the water. Okay. And let me put it in. So now we're in the water at the Fort Point Channel. It's uh, just around the uh, beginning of November. Hang on, let me grab this paddle and I'll level the camera off a little bit. Okay, so we're in. So just a quick bit of history. What we're looking at now is we're looking down toward the Inner Harbor, south on the Fort Point Channel. I'm sorry, north on the Fort Point Channel. And off to the right is the original Neko Company factory buildings, built in 1902. Now Neko was there till 1920, around 1928, I think, till they moved to Cambridge. That's the site of the United States Post Office, directly across the channel. And then if we look up the channel, there's a lot of sun up that way, but you'll see um, Gillette's, the Gillette Company's manufacturing headquarters and the site of the uh, casting basin for the central artery which was used for casting tunnel sections that became the uh, tunnel sections you drive through when you go to I-90 toward Logan Airport. Fort Point Pier itself was a requirement of Gillette by uh, the Massachusetts Depar Department of Environmental Protection as Gillette applied for an amnesty license 
to bring their properties into compliance with the uh, state waterways regulations. So this stock and pier are completely public and we're required of Gillette in order to meet, hold on, just adjusting the camera, in order to meet some of the requirements under their MST license. And there are a few more. In fact, that, a uh, little out of breath here, that dock and pier are actually uh, considered, even though it's rugged, beautifully made, it's considered actually a temporary structure because when Gillette develops that property in the future, there are going to be kicking in a number of other requirements on top of existing requirements that they got under their new development rights. Under Chapter 91, they'll be required to build a much more substantial dock, possibly a boathouse, possibly a marina with public access. So it's going to be much more substantial. All right, so now we're beautiful day out here, and that's the Summer Street Bridge ahead. Summer Street originally was called, well, it was always called Summer Street, but 100 years ago it was called Wool Row because it led to the Wool District. Fort Point was known as the Wool District, and uh, I mentioned the Neko Company was there, but there are quite a few wool manufacturing processing companies, actually, and trading companies. That, uh, they existed from the early, early 1900s through the, through the uh, end of the 20th century when the last of the wool merchants left the neighborhood. And um, now we're just going underneath the Summer Street Bridge. It used to be an operable bridge, but uh, it was restored a few years ago. It's inoperable. So you'll see right now we have about 13 or 14 feet of clearance, but at high tide, this clearance closes down to about four feet. So the basin that we were in is not really traveled that much by powerboats. They can't get underneath the bridges unless they have a fairly small powerboat, maybe a 20-footer. So now we're entering the basin. That's the Congress Street Bridge up ahead. And this is a nice little area here. This uh, Congress Street Bridge also is inoperable and subject to clearance according to the tides. Again, power boats can't really get through at high tide. The building on the right is uh, an interesting building itself. This building is a modern reproduction of a modern building. The building before this building that was on site actually started sinking into the Four Point Channel by a few inches about maybe 10, 15 years ago. So the building was torn down and reconstructed completely. It's almost an exact replica except for some uh, iron struck iron braces that went across. And now I'm looking back down Melcher Street, one of the most beautiful streets in the city. The uh, architect of the Boston Wharf Company that filled all these tidelands came in 1836. They filled the tidelands through the early 1900s and Melcher Street and the buildings around the Fort Point neighborhood. The architect was uh, Morton Safford. He was a company architect and he took great pride in his work. Uh, people who live in the Fort Point neighborhood really appreciate that work and the district is now a Boston landmark district. Up ahead here we have the Stebbins Federal Reserve Building. I'm going to pan up because it's actually one of my favorites in Boston. People call it the Washboard Building. I think it's beautiful. And then we have uh, the former Russia Wharf is now called Atlantic Wharf and that's the Intercontinental Hotel. In the middle, if you see the uh, short building between those two buildings, the two big buildings, the little tiny building in between is the uh, current 9X office building and formerly, actually it uh, might be the Verizon building. It used to be the New England Telephone building and there's a museum in the first floor, public access, a tiny little room dedicated to Alexander Graham Bell and a number of WPA paintings worth taking a look at if you're ever over in Post Office Square. So. The Fort Point neighborhood has been undergoing great change over the last 10, 15 years with significant public investment in the harbor cleanup, the Central Artery. The, uh, obviously, Central Artery invested about $4 billion just in the Fort Point seaport area alone with all the exit ramps, highway ramps, and so on. Plus the MBTA station. Hi. Hello. MBTA station and the convention center and so on. So with all that public investment, we're seeing, we're starting to see some new development in the area. There's also a uh, thriving arts neighborhood in Fort Point with a couple galleries and an art store and quite a few world-class restaurants, including some that have been 
that are known now nationwide. We have great bakeries, restaurants. So if you're at Fort Point Pier, you're in walking distance of some incredible, incredible places to eat. So off to my right, we just went under the Congress Street Bridge. This is the Children's Museum. And the Children's Museum just uh, underwent a new renovation in the front. You'll see, oh, they took down Arthur. He used to be up on top. And there's the milk bottle. Off to my right. They moved the milk bottle over, I think, about maybe 30 feet to uh, build that new, uh, that new um, expansion part of the Children's Museum. And if I look down the uh, Congress Street Bridge, to see the new site of the uh, Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum, which is supposed to be opening in 2012 along with three supposedly beautiful reconstructed ships from the Tea Party era. This obviously wasn't the location of the original Tea Party. You understand that all this was Boston Harbor, including where all those buildings are. Those are on filled tidelands. And off to the right, all of Fort Point was mud flats now filled. The deed for the Fort Point neighborhood says that in 1807, the rights were conveyed for the, um, for the filling of the Fort Point area and so all of this was part of Boston Harbor. As it was filled, the Tidelands regulations required that the public still have access and some level of amenities at the edge of the water. So there are still existing regulations that we call Chapter 91 that require accommodation for the public along the water's edge. And next summer, I'll be taking a close look at what has been built under Chapter 91 and also certain compliance issues to see how people comply with Chapter 91. Some of the public areas don't actually exist on the water's edge. Sometimes they're in the interiors of buildings, sometimes they are at the top of buildings. And we'll take a look next summer at each building and see what the public amenities are. Right now we're looking at Russia Wharf. I mean, well, they renamed it Atlantic Wharf. And this uh, property was required in addition to creating a number of private slips, has four, let me see, one, two, it looks like three, I think there's supposed to be four public slips, I see three, three, one, two, three, three, well right now I see three public slips and a site for the water taxi to pick up and drop off. So these, if you're a power boater, you can come over to tie up for 30 minutes. If you have a dinghy, you can throw anchor, tie your dinghy up and your dinghy can be on the dock for up to four hours, so you could actually have lunch over there. And if you have a kayak, you could pull your kayak up, up like a dinghy and leave it at the dock for up to four hours. So right now, we're looking at the, these pile structures underneath the wharf at Rose Wharf, at, uh, I'm sorry, Atlantic Wharf, and also the Intercontinental Hotel. This is always a fun area to come underneath, especially at night. I've done a number of great paddles in here with just a flashlight at night. And it's like something out of the Phantom of the Opera. It really is pretty amazing. There are also dark areas you can tunnel through on the other side of the channel by the Children's Museum and beyond. So this area alone is ripe for exploration. Right now we're passing along downtown Boston, just at the edge of the what they call the downtown waterfront, right behind the financial district. And up ahead, that's the federal courthouse. To the right, the uh, that's one Marina Park Drive, which is one of the first buildings on city's own property to build in the seaport in the last 10 years. We're gonna see more construction on that property, Fan Pier, in the future as a company named Vertex is uh, building two buildings and hopefully some more buildings in the future. So now we just passed, uh, I'll turn around and we'll take a look. This is the Intercontinental Hotel at the edge of the water. And next to it is Independence Wharf. That little dock up ahead is temporary. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the dock structures are temporary in the Fort Point Channel right now because they're pending future development. This one here, I think, is gonna be much more substantial built by Mass DOT, but for some reason it's hung up it may be a budget issue, but again, next summer, be taking a close look at what's supposed to be built, what hasn't been built, and what the future public access accommodations are for the Fort Point Channel. I mentioned earlier the Fort Point Channel is uh, amenable to just probably above a beginner. 
today's unusual in terms of how glassy the surface is. It usually isn't really rough, so you can have fun in the channel with basically anything above a beginner level. The harbor is a whole different story, and the inner harbor is a different story because of the size of the boats, the choppiness of the water. So about two bridges away, we'll start entering the inner harbor. At that point, you don't want to be anything below a moderate level paddler. And the seas can kick up pretty quickly with some of this high-speed ferry boats going in and out. So you really have, you have to know your boating navigation lights and signals, especially at night. <clears throat> so right here, we're looking at the uh, dock over at the Barking Crab. Now, the Barking Crab is a private marina and dock, but they're pretty uh, relaxed about allowing people to have a bite to eat. So you could pull your kayak up, kayak up or even power boat, pull it up to their dock, tie up, have lunch, and um, even, they seem to be pretty relaxed. You could probably take a little walk, come back and get your kayak. And I've done that many, many times before over the last 20 years. Uh, Barking Crab's been in, uh, maybe through a number of different managements, different names it was called. I remember Venus Seafood in the Rough and Neptune and so on. But uh, it's a pretty reliable restaurant in terms of just uh, if you have a kayak or boat and you want to tie up and have some fun. So we're moving along the Four Point Channel. The bridge on my left that we just went under is the Moakley Bridge, named after Congressman Joe Moakley. Actually, it's named after his wife, Evelyn. And it's a concrete span, fixed span, with a lot of clearance for power boats. So unlike the Congress Street Bridge and Summer Street Bridge, larger boats can get underneath this, this bridge. And up ahead, we see the uh, International Place. Philip Johnson was the architect. I might as well pan up. Some people like that building. That's uh, Philip Johnson's building. And this uh, bridge up ahead here is the uh, Old Northern Avenue Bridge, which actually was supposed to be demolished with construction of the, um, the Moakley Bridge. But the funds weren't available at the time for de demolition. I think it was going to be around $8 million for demolition. The funds weren't available. And there was a lot of advocacy for its, for its uh, permanence. People like it as a pedestrian bridge because it's flat. It's also operable, so it opens on call. I think usually an hour or two after you call for it to open, they'll come down and it swings open from the center. There's a pivoting center point. And uh, because of all the advocacy and because there wasn't the funds to demolish it, it stayed. And hopefully, in my view, I hope it stays for a while. It's a great looking bridge. A piece of history is built again, along with the three historic bridges about 100 years ago. Now we're looking at James Hook Lobster Company. 85 years old. That building was rebuilt about maybe five years ago. It was uh, on the site right to the left, but it caught fire and was rebuilt with the same sign and same looking house. And uh, Hook Lobsters where Julia Child used to buy her lobsters when she lived in Cambridge. So uh, it's a good place to buy lobster retail. And also I think they have lobster rolls and things like that. Another little gritty piece of history in Fort Point, but they've been around for quite a while. So now I'm going underneath the old Northern Avenue bridge and you'll see the tender house up ahead. The bridge tender would come out on call. He used to live in that house. And uh, I'll swing over and look at that. It's an old wooden house and actually half of it was demolished about within the last five years or so. Um, it started falling into the channel so the, it had to be demolished. They kept half of it and that was where the person lived who would open the bridge. So now we're entering the uh, inner harbor. That's Rose Wharf. The developer was the uh, Leventhal family, a uh, longtime Boston family. In fact, there, the son of Norman Leventhal was the was the guy who built the Channel Center in my neighborhood, a large residential and office development, great project. And off to the right here, we see a beautiful ship called the Roseway. But these are the kind of sights you see when you come through here. There's always something unique. That uh, that schooner wasn't there. Wasn't there uh, just a few days ago. I'm not sure when it pulled in. Here we have the kind of these ferry boats that move around the harbor. And today it's fairly, again, fairly smooth on this harbor. But this is not generally smooth surface. It's usually one one foot seas, sometimes two foot seas, and with wind it can really kick up in here. So. Uh, for, you know, for someone with serious uh, skill or moderate skill, you can come through here. And off to the left 
is the coast of Boston moving down towards the north end and off dead ahead is East Boston at Logan Airport and to the left of that is Charlestown where the Bunker Hill Monument is. So again next summer we'll be figuring out whether you can actually tie your kayak up in Charlestown and all these other spots along here. You can see off to the right of Logan Airport that's where Deer Island sewage treatment facility is and they offer tours of the sewage treatment facility and then further up the inner harbor is obviously the harbor islands which are I think something around 34 islands in total absolutely incredible places to visit during the summer and uh, they're quite a ways away so you really need a sea kayak something really quick to get to them you'd be a full day there and back off to the right this is the federal courthouse and uh, behind those windows are a uh, collection of Ellsworth Kelly paintings. He used to, uh, according to a story I heard, he used to live in the district and bike around Fort Point. And they bought a serious collection of Ellsworth Kelly, Kelly paintings when they developed the courthouse. So now we're looking down. I'm going to scoot around here and I'm just kind of paddling aimlessly in the inner harbor. Again, it's nice and calm out here today, so it's easy to do this. The buildings on the left, those tall buildings, are Harbor Towers residences, and the architect of those buildings was I.M. Pei. They've been around for probably, I'd say 30 years, something like that, maybe 20 to 30 years, I think. And off to the left, just to the, uh, to the right of Harbor Towers, the aquarium and the new expansion of the Boston Aquarium. As far as, again, tying up in this area, it's a little sketchy, I think, for kayaks unless you're willing to take some risk. There are plenty of docks, but they're all pretty much private. I'm not sure of public access around here. But again, this is an introductory tour, so next summer I'll be doing a much more extensive series of tours looking at public docks and public access. I mentioned earlier the dock over at Atlantic Wharf. I should say that most of these docks are not accessible by kayak because they're just too high. That's, that dock is about 20 to 20, maybe 20 inches high off the water line and it's near impossible to get back in a kayak over Atlantic Wharf. I see off to the left there at Rose Wharf, those are really nice looking low docks. So in theory, you could pull up there for a quick stay. <clears throat> and uh, I think that's where I'm gonna end my tour for today. I just wanted to do a quick comprehensive look at Fort Point Pier and what we have to offer. You can see up ahead in the distance there, that, that mountain, I'm not sure it's visible, but the mountain off in the distance is Spectacle Island. And Spectacle Island used to be flat, but with this big dig, the central artery, the dirt from the central artery was barged over to Spectacle Island, and there are two, now two big hills on Specky that you can walk around. And uh, I think I'm gonna end my tour there. So uh, join us next summer at Four Point Pier. We'll be doing a number of outings, hopefully some night out outings as well as day outings. And um, this is Steve Hollinger for Kyalu Gear. Look at fortpointpier.com for more information. Bye now.